Choosing an AI coding tool can be incredibly overwhelming. Number one, there's a bajillion of them. Two, there are more popping up every day. And three, everyone's arguing about them on Reddit and X. As somebody who has been vibe coding for almost three years, and I've used all of the bigger AI tools out there, in this video, I want to help you make a very easy and clear decision on your vibe coding tech stack. So here's the plan for this video. Number one, I'm going to answer some very short and easy questions just to dispel some myths. Then I'm gonna break down all of the tools you need. Five categories. I'm gonna explain things in very simple terms. I'm gonna show you exactly what I use and you're welcome to just copy exactly what I use. I use it for just about every project. And at the very end, I'm going to conclude very briefly with a, here's how to make this decision fast and easy and not spend a ton of money on these vibe coding tools. And I have good news to start. The tools you choose actually matter less than you think, less than they used to. What matters is momentum. The best tool, the best AI tool, the best stack is the one you will actually open up and use. Please don't let these overwhelm you. All the options out there, pick one and stick with it. It is so much better to just pick one that is established and stick with it and learn it and master it rather than switching tools and switching languages every two months because something new came out. Also, just about all of these AI tools, cloud codes, codexes, chat CPTs, cursor, Winsor, all these things, they're all good enough. We've gotten to a point now where there's not a whole lot of bad options, as long as you're sticking to the ones that are fairly well known. And there's a ton of those, so you're okay, no matter what you choose. Same, ex uh, same exact advice for your framework, programming language. We'll talk about this in a second. Just pick one that is established, and AI will know how to code it, generally speaking. For you beginners out there, what is a tech stack? What is Pete talking about? It can actually mean two things, really. The tools you use to code, or whatever, your code editor, your AI tools, as well as the behind the scenes technology that powers your app, meaning the programming language, the programming framework, your database, and that sort of stuff. So tech stack can actually kind of mean both of those things, or all of those things, or either one of those things, just so you know. Okay, Pete, what about Lovable? You hear this a lot. What about Lovable? These all-in-one tools that really try to be no code. I don't recommend these right now. Maybe a year or two, there will be a tool like Lovable that can do 100% of the process. But as I mentioned in a previous video, right now, 2025, 2026, AI can do 70%, 80%, maybe even 90% of the work, but they're still fixing errors, debugging your code, and some deployment things that are difficult on Bolt.new and Lovable and that sort of stuff, and it actually leads to more headache later. Right now, I don't recommend using Lovable or Bolt.new or any of these all-in-one tools. Instead, use what I'm about to show you. You will thank me later. On that note, I see a lot of these AI tools that cost 20 a month and 200 dollars a month. Pete, what do I need? Do I need the maximum plans? Absolutely not, for starters. If you're a full-time developer, yeah, you will probably run into some limits and you'll probably want the $100 plan, $200 a month, that sort of thing. For now, absolutely not. Let me do a breakdown. First of all, I should say I've never once hit my usage limits and I've never had anything more than the cheapest paid plans, $20 a month. I pay for Claude Code, Cursor, and ChatGPT. Usually I only have two of those at any given one time, but I make videos like this. Sorry, now I have all three. I've never hit my token limits, period, on any of those tools. Some people do, and I don't really understand it. There you go. Either way, start for the cheapest plans, period. I thought this would be interesting. If you're a complete beginner, Vibe Coder, you're gonna build an app, budget $20 a month. Start there. Yeah, a domain name will cost you 15 bucks a year. Your database, your host, wherever you deploy, that sort of thing, it costs $0 to start. If you already have 5,000 users ready to buy your app, yeah, you might start paying things immediately, but until you're at that point, it's free and really generous. But your AI tool, you need an AI tool. I suggest the paid ones start at $20 a month. If anything, you could do two of these for $40 a month, $50 a month, that sort of thing. That's all you need. Okay, now I'd like to share with you the five different types of tools you absolutely need in order to start coding with AI. Number one, a laptop or a computer. We're gonna skip this, I hope you already have one. 
You could do a little bit with mobile only, by the way, but no, you really need a laptop or a computer. Number two, a code editor. We've already discussed in a previous video what this is. I use and recommend Cursor. It's my favorite. It's basically a clone of VS Code, which has been around for decades, by the way, and is absolutely free, but it's just more powerful with AI. I use Cursor for all my coding, right? It's so nice to be able to see the files. You got your AI over here. You will have to learn how to navigate a little bit for sure. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's really, really simple. It takes like an hour of going back and forth and trying to do some things. You'll be a master. The second essential tool is your AI. You need an AI tool. Now, there's actually three types. Number one, the chatbots, the chat GPT, Claude.ai, etc. Number two, actually, you just saw an AI inside of your code editor, Cursor. That has AI built right into it. And then the third type are terminal command line eyes, Claude code. You run Claude code from the terminal. Same thing with Codex. Uh, Cursor actually has a separate CLI as well, as in the AI runs from a terminal window. I don't recommend this for absolute beginners, period. I love Claude code. I use Codex and Claude code. I don't recommend them for absolute beginners because you don't really need it yet. Cursor, there's your code editor and your AI all rolled up into one. So, so far we have your computer and you have cursor. Next up would be your framework, your programming language. First of all, spoiler alert, I really, really, really suggest working with AI, like ChatGPT, Claude.ai, to figure out your framework if you are a complete beginner. And remember, your, your framework is really just a starter kit for your code. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, those are programming languages, but the framework does a lot more than that. It does the folder system, the file system, the routing system, as in when I go to this URL, blah, blah, blah.com slash blah, 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 what happens? How does it know to show this code on that URL? That's called routing. Frameworks do a bunch of that type of stuff. Now I recommend choosing a framework like this. Number one, tell AI what you plan to build, the features, the app you're building, and give it, uh, let it give you suggestions. Number two, try to choose something that has existed for a while, more than a couple of years, so that AI will know it. You want AI to do the bulk of your coding and it needs to quote unquote, know the framework. Or you could like copy and paste in some documentation too. That works. Last thing, I really suggest using a JavaScript framework. JavaScript is a programming language, but there are a lot of different frameworks that are slightly different that can build apps, but they all use the same underlying language. This is helpful. Over time, if you do multiple projects, you'll be able to diagnose JavaScript. I'm not making you a coder, but you'll be able to diagnose that language across all of these different frameworks. Okay, I know this might be overwhelming if you're brand new, but the other part of your framework is the backend. And I suggest backend as a service. What does that mean? Well, there are companies out there that allow you to set up databases where you store data or cloud storage for file uploads, image uploads or whatever, as well as authentication if you have users, as in the ability to log in and log out emails, passwords, that sort of stuff, that kind of do all the dirty work for you. As in you sign up for Firebase or Supabase or Pocketbase, lots of bases in there, and these services are kind of point and click. They're third party tools that will integrate with whatever you know front end framework you choose, React, Vilkit, Astro, HANA, who cares, doesn't matter, and they'll allow you to set up databases and authentication. If all this seems a little overwhelming so far, don't worry. I'm actually going to break down what I use and what I recommend for you. And once you see that, you're gonna have a lot clearer picture in your head of what you need to sign up for and what you need to use. So you have a laptop, you're gonna choose an AI tool, probably cursor, and then you're gonna work with ChatGPT to plan your app and have it suggest a framework or a language or whatever. One more essential tool you need, is that four or five? That's actually four. The, the fifth one right here is a host where you deploy your code. There's a ton of things. I recommend using Vercel. If it has to be free, it'll stay free for a long time. Or if you're just doing a really simple website and if ChatGPT says it's okay, then use Cloudflare because it's also free and it's also great, really widely known. Again, 
Ask AI where you should host and deploy your code. So there are your five essentials right there. Okay, don't get overwhelmed yet. Really quick, there's also a million different third-party tools, libraries, packages, you'll see them called, that you can use, and you should use, and you will use. Stripe. You want to charge people money for things? I recommend Stripe. It's really great. Uh, Resend is one that I discovered a year or two ago that lets you send one-off emails really easily from your app. And again, AI can code all this into your project, but you got to send emails, like a welcome email. Use Resend. It's great. It's free. Tailwind CSS is a third-party tool for uh, styling, formatting, layouts, colors, all that different stuff. And there's a ton more. You're gonna discover these as you start building your apps. AI knows how to build all of those. Just wanted to make you aware, aware excuse me, that you'll need some of these third-party tools. AI will largely take care of it for you. Okay, here's my stack for what I use for basically every single project I create, period, except for the ones I create for these courses where I'm just kind of like challenging myself with new stuff. Here's what I use for all my real-world projects. Tools and then stack. Tools, I use Cursor. Again, the smallest paid plan, $20 a month. I use Claude Code. If you're a beginner, you don't need this yet. I also pay for ChatGPT, the, the smallest like $20 a month plan. Again, you don't need this if you're a complete beginner, but if you already pay for ChatGPT, great. It includes Codex, which is their command line, their terminal AI. Again, you don't need it. Cursor is what I suggest, but this is exactly what I use. For my tech stack, it depends on the app I'm building. For web apps, Remember we talked about that? Like bulletfinity.com, which you're looking at right now. Web apps, I use SvelteKit. That's my front end framework, the JavaScript framework, basically. And then Firebase for the database and user authentication, login, logout, that sort of thing. That's it. And of course I use Stripe for payments. I use Tailwind CSS, all those like helper tools, but that's my stack, SvelteKit and Firebase. And I never think about it again. Mobile apps, same thing. I have not done a ton of mobile apps, um, but, I'm working on a few right now and I'm using Flutter. Flutter uses a programming language called Dart. This is actually developed by Google. So this actually works really well with Firebase, which is also developed by Google. And you can kind of do this in Android and iOS, both of those kind of in the same code base in the same app, which is really helpful. And I don't ever want to code for just Apple or just Android, that would drive me insane. So I use Flutter and Dart is the programming language. Outside of that, for like little one-off tools or the stuff I make in these videos, I usually let ChatGPT decide. I really try and stick with JavaScript frameworks. In fact, I might even tell ChatGPT that, but that's it. I suggest these, I use these. Start with Cursor, use SvelteKit and Firebase. They're fantastic options. So if that wasn't enough to really just help you choose something and go for right now, I'll leave you with this. If it absolutely has to be free, you can't spend a dime, I recommend the free version of Cursor. Cursor, again, is what I use, but you can start with the free version. Yeah, it's totally limited. You're going to hit usage limits or whatever, but you can use all the other chatbots, Claude.ai, ChatGPT, Gemini, Grok. You can use all these things starting for free, or maybe not Grok, don't use Grok, but you can go back and forth if you reach the, the limits. If you already pay for Claude.ai, then use Claude Code. Start there. And I actually suggest using the free version of Cursor. Use Cursor whatever you do, right? That's my favorite code editor right now. But you can use Claude Code if you already pay for Claude.ai. If you already pay for ChatGPT, same thing, except you can use Codex right there. Free version of Cursor, and then you can use Codex. For literally anybody else, use Cursor. If you can spend $20 a month, and I hope you can if you're committed to this, just use cursor. Again, try not to let yourself get overwhelmed. I've already mentioned these things. There's a million YouTube videos you could go watch that will recommend something different. And it might have a compelling story on the why, but I've used all of these tools. And I can honestly say, beginner vibe coders, sign up for the cheapest cursor plan, download it, and you can start coding. That's it. As far as frameworks go, I recommend chatting with your AI, ChatGPT, or inside of cursor even, that's fine too and asking it, here's what I wanna build, here's the features I want, what framework should I use? Give me the simple option, give me the most optimized option, where should I host it, where should I deploy it to, and then just do what it says. So in the next video, we're gonna stop talking about all these tools, and we're actually gonna install them on our machine and set everything up in just a couple of minutes so we are ready to vibe code. Drop me an emoji in the chat, as well as any questions you might have, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.